everybody, you ready for another one? We're going to jump into 9.6 surface areas of and volumes of spheres. So we're going to look at the skin and the guts of round things today. 9.6 begins with a whole bunch of definitions um, that define sphere components. And uh, essentially, it's exactly the same terminology as is uh, circles. So uh, I don't have all of the definitions here that initially were part of the slideshow because it's the same thing as a circle. I make you write it down again. Let me just run through it real quick. A radius of a circle, just like the radius of a sphere. Uh, a sphere is just a three-dimensional circle, right? Um, diameter of a, of a circle, same concept as a diameter of a sphere. Chord of a circle, same concept as the chord of a sphere. The, uh, a tangent of a circle, same idea as the tangent of a sphere. We have here uh, one new concept that I need to get in here, and that is a secant plane. Well, you can't have that with a circle because a circle is planar. So a circle intersecting a plane is either a circle, if it's the plane that the circle is in, or it's a line, if it's not the plane that the circle is in. Um, but here, you have a sphere. It's a three-dimensional thing. It's like a grapefruit. I love grapefruit. And uh, you pass a plane through it, like, like cutting a grapefruit, and you look, and you've got a circle. And it doesn't matter how you cut the grapefruit. No matter how you do it, you're going to get a circle. And so... Um, the concept here of a secant plane is a plane that intersects uh, the sphere, okay? And, and any time a plane intersects the sphere at more than two points, so it's not a tangent plane, it's a secant plane, intersects at more than two points, um, or at least two points, then you create a circle, okay? So a circle is the intersection of a secant plane and a sphere. A couple of other concepts that are new to you based on spheres. Um, one is a great circle. A great circle is essentially the belt that the sphere wears. Okay? It's any cross-section of the sphere formed by a plane passing through the sphere's center. So you get at that circle. But if the secant plane includes the center of the sphere, then you get the biggest possible circle. Uh, if you take a grapefruit and you just lop a little end off of it, you get a small circle. If you go right through the middle of the grapefruit, then you're going to get the big circle, right? The great circle. So the largest circle you can get by whacking a sphere with a plane, great circle. Um, the circumference of a great circle is also the circumference of the sphere. Pretty simple idea if you think about it. Okay, let's move along. Another new vocabulary word to you when we're talking about spheres is a quarter of a sphere. And again, I'm going to go back to fruit. If you cut an orange, to share with some friends. You probably are gonna take the orange and cut it, and then you might lay those two halves down on your cutting board and whack them again, and now you've got quarters of an orange. And they, well, they look like quarters of an orange. They, they are pointy on the ends, and then they're, they're a quarter of a sphere in the middle, right? Those shapes are called loons. Why? because that's what they're called. So what happens if you get two secant planes that are perpendicular to each other and you pass them through a sphere, you cut the sphere into fourths and those are called loons. Don't know why. That's what they're called. Get over it. So the, um, we've done the surface area, the skin of prisms and cylinders and pyramids and cones and now we're going to do the skin of a sphere. The total surface area of a sphere is four times pi r squared. Now what's pi r squared? Pi r squared is the area of a circle. Interestingly, if you take a circle and you look at how much surface area there is, and you think how many more circles do I need to wrap a sphere of that same circumference? If I were asked that question without knowing this, I would say, gosh, lots. Because you've gone from just a flat thing to a three-dimensional round thing. But in truth, you need exactly four times the area of a circle to wrap a sphere of the same circumference. It seems counterintuitive to me, but smarter people than me have figured that out. So the formula for the surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared. Pretty easy to remember, okay? It's just like the area of a circle, but it's the area of a sphere, and you four times it, and you're done. So how much asphalt would you need to pave the moon? 
because that's something that everybody wants to do, right? The moon can be modeled as a sphere with a radius of 1,738 kilometers. That's a big ball. Find the approximations for the circumference and surface area of the moon. Okay, circumference first. Circumference is 2 pi r, right? So 2 pi r, r they gave us 2 times pi times r, 3,476 pi. If you want to make that an approximate decimal equivalent, 10,920 kilometers around. That's a big belt. That's a big belt. Now let's look at what it would take to pave the thing, okay? Um, same thing, 4 pi r squared. Uh, 4 times pi times the radius squared is 12 million. 82,576 pi square kilometers. Holy moly, Batman. Uh, and then if we want to reduce that to an approximate decimal equivalent, 37,958,532 square kilometers of asphalt. <sighs> it's going to be a lot of rocket ships to pave that thing. But when it's done, talk about an awesome slick track, right? Right? So what's the volume of a sphere? Well, the volume of a sphere is calculated very similarly to the area of a circle, right? Pi r squared is the area of a circle, and it's square because we're talking about a flat thing. Now we're talking about volume. So pi r cubed makes sense, right? But it's it's a little bit more than pi r cubed. It's, it's about a third more than pi r cubed. It's actually exactly third more than pi r cubed. So one and a third times pi r cubed, or four thirds times pi r cubed. Four thirds pi r cubed is the formula for the volume of a sphere. Let's do another example with a typical like basketball, about a 10 inch diameter. Now that's, that's a diameter, not a radius. So we don't use diameters in these equations, we use radii. So we need to make sure that we're using the right amount to begin with, five inch radius. Um, and we want the volume. So 4 thirds times pi times 5 cubed. 5 cubed is 125. Uh, 4 thirds of 125, we could just say 4 times 125, which is 500 over 3. 500 times pi over 3 uh, cubic inches, or if you want to reduce that down to an equivalent decimal. And actually, 500 thirds, you could probably have made that a smaller number too. I don't know why they stopped there, but 500 thirds pi uh, becomes 523.6 cubic inches, and that would be the volume of a ball with that diameter. One more example. We have one of those big old earth balls, like the big kind that you played with at camp and it rolled over you and you broke your glasses. Uh, and it's got a 22 foot circumference. And if somebody wants to know how much air goes in that thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this ball with a 22-foot circumference. First, we need to know how big its radius is. And then we're going to uh, calculate how much air goes into it. So let's do that. Circumference is known, 22 feet. C is 22 feet. C is 2 pi r. We're going to solve for r, and we're going to find that the radius is 3.5 feet. All right. Um, we're going to actually leave it as the simplified... Uh, simplified irrational, the uh, 11 over pi. And we're going to plug that in now as the radius. So 4 thirds pi times 11 over pi cubed. That's really fun. 11 cubed times 4 is 5,324. Pi cubed in the, in the denominator and pi being multiplied by that actually reduces that by a power, right? So it's pi cubed in the denominator, something divided by pi cubed times pi. We're going to lower the power by 1. So it's pi squared in the denominator. And then 3 over there, 3 times pi squared is 3 pi squared. So the exact answer is 5,324 divided by 3 pi squared feet cubed. And you're like, nah, what's that? Turn that into a basically equivalent decimal value, and you have 179.8 cubic feet of air. Holy moly, that's a lot of air. Okay, that's it, folks. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Otherwise, God bless you. See you in class tomorrow. Jesus loves you, and so do I.